two of the all-time greats in the sport of drag racing, Don Prudhomme and Don Garlitz, comparing notes. Between them, a total of 11 U.S. Nationals victories, six to Prudhomme, five to Garlitz. This year, Prudhomme lost in the first round to Billy Meyer. Another loser in round number one was Gary Beck. Gary, in a lot of ways, you must wish that you were in the seat of that race car going against Don Garlitz because he's a particular favorite of yours. If you, anytime you can punish him. Well, it is. Uh, I'm real pleased that Don has chosen to come back and really race and go go after us competitively, and he certainly is capable of doing it. He's a, he's as tough as they come. We all know that. It's going to be a good drag race uh, with against Larry Miner. It's uh, our cars. Uh, we uh, starting to run a little better for him, but it's going to be good. It's we'll see. You know. You've raced on Garlitz so many times, battling for world titles over the years. Any advice for Larry how to race Don Garlitz? Well, he's pretty clever, you know, and he's real cagey. I've already, I was watching Don the last two runs, and I've already been talking to, to Larry a little bit about what he's been doing so that Larry's a little more familiar with some of his techniques that he's using around the start line, so it won't surprise Larry. But it's, uh, Larry does a good job there on his own, you know, uh, but it's, uh, it's, uh, it's going to be a great drag race. I must agree with that. The reigning world champion, Gary Beck, now helping his boss and car owner, Larry Miner, as he gets set to go against Don Garland. While all this preparation has been going on, we've been having the second round of Pro Stock Eliminator. In the factory hot rods in the near lane, it was Lee Shepard driving for the team of Rare and Morrison. Gordon Rivera in the far lane, and Rivera pulled off the upset. Mechanical troubles slowed Shepard, and Rivera a happy man as he won. Gordy Rivera, Yuma, Arizona. Like any drag racer who's ever beaten Lee Shepard, he is very excited about it. I bet you did. What happened on the starting lineup? Then? I was super ready. I figured another one. <laughs> you know, so many drivers red light against Shepard and really give away their chance at a starting line. I've done that once this year. I said I wasn't going to do it no more. I waited for that yellow and I left. <laughs> I tell you, it's good to see a new face down here uh, in the pro stock standings and a uh, beautiful job with a beautiful car, Gordy. Thank you. Thank you. We then watch the classic Ford versus Chevrolet battle in the near lane. It is Bob Glidden, the hometown favorite, driving his Ford Thunderbird against New Jersey's Frank Iaconio, driving his Chevrolet Camaro. Both cars left the starting line with the wheels in the air as the power was applied down the quarter-mile racetrack. At the finish line, it was the Ford Thunderbird just eking out a win by half a car leg. These guys are out good, and I'm telling you, will we're going to have to make some changes. We need to run a little better than we've run. We need to run a middle 60. A funny car driver, top field, that can put in more nitro or drive the blower harder. What does a pro stock guy do to whittle up a few hundreds? We'll probably change engines between this round and the next. Our next pair of cars saw the Oldsmobile of Warren Johnson in the near lane racing against the Pontiac Firebird of Ronnie Manchester. The two cars came off the starting line relatively even, but it was not long before the power of the Oldsmobile took over, and by several car lengths, it was Warren Johnson taking the second round win over Ronnie Manchester. Our final pair in round number two of Pro Stock Racing found Joe Lapone Jr. driving the Pontiac in the near lane against the bright red Camaro owned by Bob Panella and driven by the veteran Ken Dondero. Dondero had the slight advantage off the starting line. He held the lead at this point, but the power of Joe Lapone's car almost pulled out a win. Oh, so close at the finish. Look at the times. 7.79 for Lapone, Dondero at 7.82. The advantage off the starting line paid off. There's our semifinalists, Ken Dondero against Bob Glidden, Gordy Rivera against Warren Johnson. It is Johnson, number four in the world last year, driving the Oldsmobile Cutlass. Gordy Rivera at the wheel of his Chevrolet Camaro. These cars use engines up to 500 cubic inches in displacement, run on racing gasoline, are limited to two four-barrel carburetors, and must weigh no less than 2,350 pounds with the driver. Very evenly matched. The Oldsmobile in the far lane, the Chevrolet in the near lane, the factory hot rods of championship drag racing's Pro Stock Eliminator. The power of Johnson's Oldsmobile proves out to be the winner at 7.64 seconds.
at a speed of over 181 miles an hour. So Warren Johnson of Duluth, Georgia, advances into the finals of the 30th annual U.S. Nationals. Here is the Ford Thunderbird of Bob Glidden using a 500 cubic inch shotgun Ford engine, a race motor designed and developed by Ford against him. Ken Dondero driving Bob Canella's car, this with the big block 500 cubic inch Chevrolet motor. The fans love it when the Ford versus Chevrolet battle matches up on the starting line. The teaming of Ken Dondero and Bob Vanella is a rematch of a driver-owner team that dated back over a decade in drag racing. The Ford of Glidden in the far lane, Ken Dondero in the near lane. Together they leave the starting line. It is Dondero and Glidden side by side, and at the finish line, it is by a half a car length, Bob Glidden, 772 at a speed of over 178 miles an hour. As we watch again, you see the two cars almost as one clawing into the air, the front wheels off the pavement, the rear tires trying to get a hold of the pavement, pulling the cars ahead, headed for that finish line 1,320 feet away. As they reach the speed traps at the finish line, Glidden begins to pull ahead and by a half a car length, takes the win. That sets up the finals in Pro Stock, Bob Glidden against Warren Johnson. There are several special awards presented at the U.S. Nationals. Steve Evans has one of them. Well, Dave, the McGuire Wax people have done it again. From the over 1,000 entries here at the U.S. Nationals, their best appearing car award goes to just a jewel of a racing machine. It's Brad Klein's A-Factory Experimental. A Don Nest chassis topped with a gleaming red 84 Camaro body painted by Gene Fashing, the pro stock racer. Now look at the detail in this back window. It is all Zeus buttoned in for easy removal so that they can clean all of this beautiful hand-formed aluminum inside and get to their weight transfer bars very easily. The stripe along the side, it's not just on the side. As we open the door, we'll see that it even continues through the door jam. Brad Klein is a psychotherapist from Amarillo, Texas. And if you look at this car, every screw in the entire car has the head pointed in the same direction. That indeed would drive you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> right you are, Steve. And our congratulations on a beautiful car to Brad Klein. Here is a beautiful car, too, as the long-awaited Top Fuel semifinals just about ready to go. Don Garlitz into the lanes at the U.S. National. At Indianapolis Raceway Park in the 30th annual running of the U.S. Nationals, I'm Dave McClelland, along with Steve Evans, and all eyes are on the starting line as we're set for the semi-final round of Top Fuel Eliminator. Here is Big Daddy Don Garland. He is at the U.S. Nationals for the first time in five years. It was 20 years ago that Big Daddy won his first ever U.S. Nationals title back in 1964. He's racing against Larry Miner, a relative newcomer to top fuel racing. Earlier, Steve talked with him. How does it feel for you in only your second year of driving to be going up against the legend, Big Daddy Don Garlick? Well, really, you know, it doesn't bother me because uh, I'm relaxed out here and I'm just doing my own thing and having fun. And so there's no pressure on me. And I think that's why I can really do a pretty decent job of driving. Miner, the car owner of that all-star racing team with three cars in competition. He's the only one left. And Garlitz is pulling ahead at the finish line and puts out Larry Miner. It's Don Garlitz into the finals of the U.S. Nationals. And Larry Miner having problems with his parachute, but he seems to be bringing the car to a safe stop. For Don Garlitz, a great run in the semifinals. 5.56 second elapsed time. His speed over 254 miles an hour. As we look again, Garlitz had pulled ahead by the middle of the racetrack. He continued to hold that lead until the finish line. And by one car length, Don Garlitz advances to the finals, defeating Larry Miner. Garlitz very composed as he comes out of the car, taking off his helmet and shaking over his engine. Well, after a five-year absence, Big Daddy goes into the final with a 5.56, and a good race it was. Yes, it was. It was a real good race. I, he actually was right out there to about the eighth mile, and it just kind of... Pulled away, I guess I had a little higher top speed. And the engine looks just fine, dry, not a drop of oil out of it? Yeah, I had one little problem. A throttle cable was breaking up there, and we just barely got it fixed. Well, the chute worked this time. Everything worked this time. Yeah, I'm, I'm real happy, really. Let's go back to the starting line and see just who Don Garlitz is going to race in that final round. Gene Snow or Connie Coletta? 
Steve will know that in just a moment. The only newcomer in the sport is now out of competition in Top Fuel. It's all veterans. Connie Coletta in the near lane. A former funny car racer moving into the crew chief role for Shirley Muldowney when she won her first world championship, then back into driving and driving better than ever. For Gene Snow, a former funny car racer, over 20 years experience in the sport. Snow now campaigning his top fuel dragster out of his home base in Fort Worth, Texas. Snow up in smoke and Coletta beginning to extend the lead. Can he hold on to it at the finish line? A close race and the wing comes off of Snow's car. Snow with the parachute out keeps the car under control as it bounces to a safe stop. But the win goes to Connie Coletta and two veterans in the final. Don Garlett against Connie Coletta. Let's watch and see just what happened. Very close racing at the first speed light. And right at the finish line, Coletta pulls ahead. From the rear angle, you can see Snow in the far lane. In the near lane is Coletta. Coletta takes the win, but the wing just collapses on Gene Snow's car. Momentarily, he starts to lose control. The parachute out instantly, pulling the car back to straight down the racetrack, and Snow bringing it to a safe stop. Snow running 250 miles an hour on this run, did a great driving job keeping the car under control. When that wing unloads its speeds like 250 miles an hour, it can cause severe handling problems. You see the damaged struts and there's no wing at all. For Gene Snow, very, very disappointed as he had a great race going with Connie Coletta until the mechanical problems set in with the wing. We're down to the semifinals in Funny Car Eliminator. Kenny Bernstein in the near lane, the defending champion against the reigning world champion, the Chi-Town Hustler, with Frank Hawley at the wheel. The burnout procedures are completed. All that's left is to light those two yellow bulbs at the top of the Christmas tree. The green light comes on, and Hawley, out of shape off the starting line, has to lift. And it is Kenny Bernstein for the second year in a row into the finals of Funny Car Eliminator at the U.S. Nationals. Some engine problems, possibly 5.74 seconds. A great time for Bernstein. His speed, 250 miles an hour. And what a disappointment this has to be for Frank Hawley as he goes out in the semifinals. The veteran Tom McEwen, the mongoose he's known as, is in the near lane. Here is the newcomer to funny car racing. He only started this season. Jim Head from Columbus, Ohio. Let's go to Steve. Two years in a row you go to the finals. Last year you won it. Well, you know, it's a long way there yet. One more run and a hard one. Polly and those guys are super. But we're glad to be there. We're glad to be there. They apparently had some sort of problem on the starting line. I don't know if you could see it or not. A fuel leak or something? No, I didn't know. Didn't have any idea. At that stage, you're not worrying too much about that. In your own right. you got your own problems to take care of, and don't worry about that. And we're just lucky today we ran through there. And, of course, now we ran good. That's good. Kenny Bernstein taking dead aim on his second Nationals title in a row. For Tom McEwen, it's been a long dry spell since 1978 when he won the Funny Car Championship. For Jim Head, I am sure he is thrilled just to be in the semis and earning the right to race Tom McEwen. The driver's concentrating on the start, and it is Head and McEwen. Something going wrong with Tom McEwen's car, and another major upset as the crew for Jim Head responds in joy. Another 5.90 elapsed time for Head, but good enough for the semifinal win to set up this race. Kenny Bernstein against Jim Head for the final in Funny Car Eliminator. The two veterans, Don Garlitz and Connie Coletta, in the finals of Top Fuel Eliminator. In Coletta's pit area, there's lots of work going on readying his mount for the final against Garlitz.